We have been asked to write 0 0.37 as a fraction for one mark, okay? So, to do this, the simplest way is to take the number after the decimal place, which is 37, and how many decimal places is it? 1, 2. So, because it's two decimal places, we can say that's 2, 0, so it's by, uh, divided by 100, so over 100, like this. You get one mark for this question, and this one mark comes getting 37 over 100, like that. We have been asked to write 29,381 correct to the nearest 1,000 for one mark. Okay, so to do this, what we do is we look at the um, hundreds column because it's to the nearest thousand. The number that's going to decide this is the place value before it, which is a hundred. Okay, if this number is five or more, we're going to round up. If it's four or less, we're going to round down. Okay, so three is four or less, so this is going to be round down. Okay, so we're just going to say round down, and this means we are going to get 29,000 like that. Now this question is worth one mark and you get one mark for the correct answer of 29,000. We have been asked to simplify 3e minus e plus 4e for one mark. Okay, all we need to do is we need to combine the e's. Okay, and just think about these as sweets. If I have three sweets and I subtract a sweet, that means I have two sweets left plus four sweets. And then if I have two sweets and four sweets on the other hand and I add them, that means I have six sweets altogether. So we have a final answer of 6a. And this question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the correct final answer. We have been asked to write 1 over 4 as a percentage, and this question is worth one mark. Okay? To start off with, we are going to convert the number 1 over 4 into a form with 100 as the denominator, because this is a percentage. Okay? So we're going to say 1 over 4 will become n over 100. Okay? We multiply the denominator by 25 multiply the numerator by 25 like that, okay? So this means that we get 1 over 4 equals 25 over 100. And because it's 25 over 100, the 100 is percentage, so per 100. So this means the final answer is 25%. You get one more for the correct answer of 25. Just make that tick a bit nicer. There we go. We are told here is a list of numbers. And from the numbers in the list, we need to write down a cube number for one mark. Okay, so a cube number is one which can be written in the form n to the power of three. Okay, now three is not a cube number, okay, because there is nothing that you multiply by itself uh, three times to get three. Four is a square number, nine is a square number, 18 isn't, 27. Well, 27 can be written as three times three times three or three cubed. So 27 is a cube number. Okay, and this question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the correct final answer. We are told that Liz is watching a film in the cinema. The film started at 2.30. There is meant to be um, two dots here for 2.30. There we go. And we are told the film is 105 minutes long. When the film ends, Lizzie takes 20 minutes to get to the bus stop, and the bus leaves the stop at um, 4.45. Okay, so we're going to add two lines in there. There we go. The question is, does Liz get to the bus stop in time uh, to get this bus? And we must show what are working. And this question is three marks. Okay. So, first, we need to convert 105 minutes into hours and minutes. So, 105 yeah, into hours and minutes, sorry. So, first, we are going to subtract 60 for one hour. Okay, so we're going to say this is one hour and 105 minus 60 minutes, okay? And this on its own is one hour and 45 minutes. There we go. Then it's going to take Liz 20 minutes to get to the bus stop. So this on its own is just zero hours and 20 minutes, okay? Now we can take uh, 2.30, okay, or 14.30 in this case, so 14 30, we will add 1 hour and 45 minutes, okay, so let's do this, 0 plus 5 is 5, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then this 1 plus this imaginary 0 here is just 1, so technically if we were to do it using hundreds, it's 1575, but this isn't a number, a number, and we need to convert this time into a correct format, okay, this is going to be um, 15 minutes past the hour, 
Okay, so when this number becomes 60 to form a new hour, it's 15 minutes past that. So to form 60, this will be four o'clock, like that. And then we need to add the 15 minutes, and this becomes 16, 15, like that. Now, all we need to do is add the 20 minutes, so 0, 0, 20, like that. 0 plus 5 is 5, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 16 like that. 16.35, um, the time uh, the bus comes is 16.45, and yes. Okay, so what we need to say here is something along the lines of 16.35 is before 16.45, and so yes, she does does get there on time, okay? So this um, question is worth one mark. The first mark comes for one correct time conversion. So here we converted um, 105 minutes into one hour and 45 minutes. So that will get to our first mark. A second mark comes from a full method to make a comparison. So effectively getting up to here, because what we did was we converted the time, then we showed we needed to combine these times and add them and get in, uh, the time she finishes the cinema, okay? And then the third and final mark comes from a, a correct conclusion as I have done here. We are told for hard, George and Tom each did a test, okay? And we are shown the marks for the test, okay? So for hard got 74, George 77, and Tom 72. George drew this bar chart, okay, to show the marks they got, but the chart is not fully correct. We have been asked to write down two things that are wrong with George's bar chart, and this question is worth two marks, okay? So if we look at it, the first thing we can say is that the bars aren't the same width, okay? So I'm just going to say here, bars are not the same width, which they have to be for a bar chart, okay? It's only in a histogram where the bars don't have to be the same width, but if you're looking at a bar chart, they do, okay? Secondly, the y-axis doesn't have a label, which means if someone's given this data, they won't know what to make of it, okay? So that's what we need to say. Why axis has no uh, label okay and we're going to say should be labeled mark okay and by mark i mean what the people's got okay so this question is worth two marks and you get one mark for a suitable answer okay we are told abc is a straight line we have been asked for part A and part I of A to work out the size of the angle marked X for one mark, okay? Now, we know that angles on a straight line are 180 degrees, okay? So, X plus 150 degrees equals 180 degrees, okay? This means that X equals 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, and this is 30 degrees, okay? And what we did is we subtracted 150 degrees from this side, and 150 degrees from that side. So that leaves us a final answer of 30 degrees. You get one mark for this uh, part and that one mark comes from a correct answer. Now, part B, or oh, part I, I, sorry, of part A has asked us to give a reason for our answer. And the reason is simply that um, angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. So angles on a straight line line sum to 180, let me just fix that, degrees, okay? And uh, the mark team has underlined some words, which means they are crucial to include. These words are angles and line, okay? So you need these two words in your answer to get that mark, okay? And you get one mark for a correct answer as such. Here, we are told the diagram below is wrong, okay? And Parby has asked us to explain why. Well, we know that the angles around this point should uh, sum 360 degrees. So we say angles around point sum to 360 degrees. Okay, the diagram shows a total sum 
of this right uh, square here means it's a right angle. So this can be 90 degrees plus the angle we're given, which is 280 degrees, and this equals 370 degrees like that. Okay. And then finally, we can just say 370 degrees doesn't equal 360 degrees, and therefore is wrong. Okay. So this part is worth one mark and you get one mark for uh, just really any, any acceptable answer, which conveys the idea that um, it should be 360 degrees really around this point and this diagram doesn't show that, like this. We are told this scale can be used to change between kilometers and miles, okay? We have been asked to use the scale to change 40 kilometers to miles for one mark, okay? So let's look where 40 kilometers is. Kilometers is the bottom axis, okay, or the bottom scale. Now, if you see where it corresponds to, it's here. And that is, you know, approximately in between 20 and 30. So it's pretty safe to say um, we can assume it's 25 miles, okay, as a pretty good approximation. So this part is worth one mark and you get one mark for a correct answer of 25. You can have any answer between 24 and 26. We are then told here is an approximate rule to change from kilometers to miles. We have to divide the distance in kilometers by 10 and then multiply by 6. Part B has asked us to use this approximate rule to change 40 kilometers to miles for two marks. Okay, so what we're going to do okay, is we're going to rewrite this as some sort of rule, okay? So we're going to say we have our distance in kilometers, okay, times, sorry, divide by 10 and times by 6. So because we need to change 40, what we're going to do is we're going to do 40 over 10 times 6. We can cancel these zeros like that. So we have 4 over 1 times 6. This becomes 4 times 6, which equals 24 miles, there we go, okay? So for this one, you get two marks. The first mark comes from um, anywhere showing this step and your second mark comes from a correct final answer. Part C has asked us to compare our answer to part B with our answer to part A for one mark, okay? Now, part A uh, uh, gave us 25, and part B gave us 24, okay? So, these are very similar, okay? So you can go one of two ways. You can either say um, part A gave us a larger result or the converse part B gave us a smaller result, or you can say the two answers are quite close. I'm just gonna go and say the two answers are quite close like that. So for this one you get one mark and that one mark comes from getting, uh, from just giving a correct comment or a correct statement on the answers, okay? So you could have compared them and said part B is smaller or you could have just said the two answers are quite close, okay, as I have done here. Part A has asked us to solve 3m equals 36 for one mark, okay? So if 3m equals 36, m equals 36 over 3 which equals 12. And this comes from dividing both sides by 3, like that, okay? So that is 12. You get one mark for a correct answer of m equals 12. Part B has asked us to solve 7 minus x equals 3 for one mark, okay? So what we can do here is we can say uh, from 7 minus x equals 3, we will get that 7 equals 3 plus x, and this comes from adding, um, sorry, x to both sides. And then we will get that 7 minus 3 equals x, which is 4 equals x. And you get this by subtracting 3 from both sides, like that. Okay, so we can say that x equals 4. This part is worth one mark, and you correct, get a uh, mark for the correct final answer of 4. We are given a cuboid, okay, like this. We are told to work out the volume of the cuboid, and this uh, question is worth three marks, okay? So, the 
formula for the uh, volume of a cuboid, the volume equals the length times the width times the depth. Okay, so length, width, depth. So this would be um, 10 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 15 centimeters like this. Okay, so the more difficult one is to find 4 times 15. So we're just going to do this in column multiplication like this. 4 times 5 is 20, 0 carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So this is going to be 60 centimeters squared. So this equals 10 centimeters times 60 centimeters squared. All we have to do is put another 0 on top. So that's going to be 600, because we're multiplying by 10. And then centimeters times centimeters squared is centimeters cubed. Meaning the correct answer is 600 centimeters cubed. Now this question is worth three marks. The first mark comes a complete method to find four times 10 times 15, okay? So as we have done um, here, sorry, here, because we did the first multiplication to get 60, and then we know we need to multiply by 10. Your second mark comes from getting 600, and your third mark comes from getting centimeters cubed, as such, okay? So in effect, this just gives you a correct final answer. We are told Lucy uses a code to open a lock. Okay, the code is followed, uh, the code is a letter followed by a two-digit two number. The letter is L or U, and the number is a prime number between 20 and 30. We need to write down all the possible uh, possibilities of Lucy's code, and this question is worth two marks. Okay, so first we need to identify the prime numbers between 20 and 30. Okay, so let's write them down. We have... Uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Okay? So, is 20 a prime number? No, it's a multiple of 2, so we can cross it out. And the same thing for 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. 21 is a multiple of 3, so we can cross it out. 23 isn't a multiple of anything before it, so 23 is a prime number. 25 is a multiple of 5, so we can get rid of it. 27 is a multiple of 3, so we get rid of it. And 29 is also a prime number. Okay? So, that means the combinations, if we were to draw this as a grid, L, U, and followed by uh, 23, 29. Okay? Something like this. This is a good way to make sure you get all your possibilities. Okay? Like this. Right? The code is a letter followed by a two-digit number. So the letter comes first. So we have L23, L29, U23, um, U29. Like that. Okay? Now this uh, question is worth two marks. You get one mark for listing uh, two correct outcomes. Or you get two marks for listing all four correct outcomes with no extras or repeats. Okay, so we have listed them all, so we get two full marks like that. We are told a machine fills bags with sweets. There are 4,275 sweets, and in each full bag there are 28 sweets. The machine fills as many bags as possible, and we have been asked to find how many sweets are left for three marks. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find number of full bags, okay? And the way we do this is we're going to do 4,275 divided by 28, okay, on a calculator, okay? So if we were to do this, 47.5 divided by 28, you will get an answer of 152.67, etc., okay? Now, this 0.67, etc., this part here, is not a full bag. So we have to ignore this and we say, therefore, 152 full bags. Okay? The second step is to find number of sweets in 152 full bags. And this is going to be 152 bags times 28 sweets per bag okay so in a calculator we will do 152 times 28 
okay, which is 4,256. Finally, three, um, number of suites left equals the number of suites we had initially minus the number of suites that have been used to fill the bags. Okay, so if we do 4,275 minus 4,256, we get a final answer of 19. So that is 19 suites left. Now this question is worth three marks. You get one mark for finding the correct number of four bags. Okay, sorry, wrong color. You get a second mark for finding the total number of suites um, the four bags takes, which is this value here. And you get your third and final mark for getting that there's 19 suites left. We are told the table gives information about the number of goals scored by each of the three teams, City, Rovers and United. Okay, we have been asked to draw an accurate pie chart for this information, and this question is worth three marks. Okay, so we first need a method to find the angle. Okay, now the formula is the angle, okay, of uh, part x is going to be the number of x divided by the total times 360 degrees. Okay, so we're going to say for city, this is going to be 50 over, now let's find the total really quickly, which we should have done at the start. 50 plus 45 plus 25 is 120. So we're going to say just here, total equals 120. So it's 50 over 120 times 360, and this equals 150. Okay, so this will be 150 degrees. For rovers, this is going to be 45 over 120 times 360 degrees, and this will be 135 degrees. And finally, for united, this will be 25 over 120 times 360 degrees, and this will be 75 degrees. Now a good check is just, just to check the number of degrees sums up to 360. So 150 plus 135 plus 75, do this on your calculator, is 360 degrees. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, so now, okay, um, off camera, I have drawn this on the grid. Okay, and I'll walk you through just the steps to get it. It's just drawing it at the same time. It's a bit complicated because of the whole touch screen. Okay, so... Because we are told the angle for city is 150 degrees, what we have to do is we have to place the edge of our protractor on this line here with the sort of cross part of our protractor where all of the lines intersect on this region here. And then we measure 150 degrees, okay? So we will mark the point somewhere here and we will draw a full line with our ruler, okay? So this is going to be 150 degrees and this is for city. Now, what we're going to do to draw our next angle is we're going to do the same thing, except this will be our main line of reference. So what we do is we will rotate our paper to make this our new um, baseline. Again, place our protractor on this line with the center of the protractor at the center of our circle. Measure 135 degrees this way, so as we have here. And this will be for rovers. And then finally, we will do the same thing again, making this our center line measuring 75 degrees, okay, well, in this case, I guess you don't really need to do it because it is the final angle, but it's always good just to double check. This way, if it doesn't exactly make 75, you know you've made an error somewhere, so you can rub it out and just double check your answer, okay? So 75 degrees, and we know that this is for united, like that, okay? So this uh, question is worth three marks. The first mark is a correct method to find at least one angle, which we have done here. The second mark comes from all three angles correctly calculated. Okay, so that gets us all, uh, our second mark. And then your third and final mark comes from a correctly drawn uh, pie chart. We are told that t equals 3x plus 4y. We have been to asked to work out the value of t when x equals 5 and y equals minus 7 for two marks. Okay, so we're going to say that t equals 3 times 5 plus 4 times minus 7. This equals 15 minus 28, and we can put this into our calculator so we don't make a mistake. 15 minus 28, which is minus 13. 
So T is minus 13, like that. You get two marks for this correct part. You get one mark for the correct substitution, as I have done here, and you get one mark for the correct final answer. We have been asked to work out the value of y when t equals 38 and x equals 6. Okay, so let's substitute these values. We have 38 equals 3 times 6 plus 4y. 38, let me just fix that, 38 equals 3 times 6 is 18 plus 4y. So this means we have 20 equals 4y, and this comes from subtracting 18 on this side and subtracting 18 on this side. And then we have y equals 20 over 4, which equals 5. And this comes from dividing by 4 and dividing by 4. So this means that y equals 5. For this part, you get two marks. First mark comes from a complete method, okay, to get y, so that's up to here. And then the second mark comes from a correct final answer. We are told an exam paper has two papers, sorry, paper one and paper two. Paper one has 60 marks and paper two has 90 marks. The pass mark is two thirds of the total number of marks, okay? Danielle gets 70% of the marks of paper one. How many of the marks for paper two must Danielle get in order to get the pass mark, okay? And this question is worth four marks. So, first we're going to work out what the pass mark is, okay? So we're going to say the pass mark, which is going to be abbreviated PM, equals 2 over 3 times 60 plus 90, okay? So this is 2 over 3 times 150. If we put this to a calculator, 2 times 150, so 3 times 150, divided by 3, this means a pass mark is going to be 100, okay? Now, number of marks that Daniel got on paper 1, so we'll say paper, uh, sorry, paper 1 mark is going to be 70% of 60, and this is going to be 0 0.7 times 60, which equals, so if we put this into our calculator, it means he got 42, sorry, they got 42. So that is 42 marks, okay? And they need 100 marks, okay? So mark needed on paper two equals 100 minus 42, and if we plug this into the calculator, you will get an answer of 58 marks means the final answer is going to be 58 marks, like that. So this uh, question is worth four marks. The first mark comes uh, for a correct process to find the pass mark for the exam, okay, which we have done here, okay, so this is our pass mark. The second mark comes from a process to um, find how many marks they scored on paper one, as we have done here. Third mark comes from a complete uh, set of processes to find the required mark, which gets us up to here. And then the fourth mark comes from getting the number of marks they need, as being 58 marks, or correctly doing the arithmetic. We are told Scott wants to make orange juice, okay? He is going to buy boxes of oranges. oranges. There are 24 oranges in each box of orange, uh, oranges, sorry, and we know that 30 oranges makes 2 litres of orange juice. He needs to buy enough oranges to make 8 litres of orange juice. Work out the number of boxes, okay, of oranges that Scott needs to buy, and we must show all of our working, and this part is worth 3 marks. So first, okay, he needs... 8 litres of orange juice, okay, and we know 2 litres of orange juice comes from 30 oranges. So this means he needs um, 120 oranges, okay? And the way we get this is there is a ratio, so uh, litres of orange juice to oranges is 2 to 30. So if he needs 8, okay, what we're doing is we're multiplying this side by 4, so we multiply this side by 4 to get 120. 20 like that. Okay? Finally, we know one box has 24 oranges, so 24 oranges. Okay? 
and we need 120 oranges so this is 120 what do we multiply by 24 to get 120 times what well this can be found by doing 120 over 24 and if you put that into your calculator this is 5 which means we need to multiply this side by 5 like that okay to get 5 sorry in a different color to get 5 boxes so we can just write here he needs 5 boxes so this part is worth three marks. The first mark comes from an acknowledgement of 120 oranges required. Okay, so as we have done here. The second mark comes for a complete process. So understanding you need to do 120 divided by 24. That's this one here. And then the third and final mark comes from the correct final answer. We are then told Scott also buys 1,260 apples and 280 bananas. We need to write down the ratio of the number of apples that Scott buys to the number of bananas that he buys and give our ratio in the simplest form for two marks. Okay, so we need to give it in the form of apples to bananas. I forgot to spell that for a second. So this is going to be 1260 to 280. Okay, the first thing to do is go to your calculator and type 1260, the fraction symbol of 280, like that. This gives you a fraction 9 to 2, which means the simplest form of this ratio is 9 to 2, like that. Now, this part is worth two marks. The first mark comes from uh, any partially simplified correct ratio. Okay, so you can start with 126 to two, uh, 28 or anything like that. Um, and then your second mark comes from the correct simplified ratio of 92. So this on its own will get you two marks. So we are given a diagram. I'll go down in a second. But the question is asked us to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B for two marks. Okay. So if we take a look, here is triangle A, here is triangle B. Now, the first thing to look for is to look at the vertices. Okay. So this vertex is this vertex. This one is this one, and finally this one up here is this one down here. So because they have all changed relative to each other, it means we uh, a rotation has happened, okay? So, we know that this is a rotation. So we're gonna say rotation, like this. Now, if you see this flat edge has been flipped 180 degrees to become the top edge and this side edge has also flipped 180 degrees to become this side edge. So this means we know it's a rotation of 180 degrees. Okay, so we have the actual transformation that took place. Okay, it was a rotation of 180 degrees. But now what we need to do is we need to include the uh, center of rotation or the center of the transformation. Okay, this is what's going to give us our second mark. Okay, and the way we're going to find this is we're actually just going to join up each of our points. So from here to here, just I'm hoping that's going to convert to a straight line, which it does. Excellent. Okay, there we go. Oops, let me just uh, fix that. We have that. That's good. And then we're going to draw another line from this point all the way to this point. Okay, again, just straightened out. In the exam, you'll be using a ruler, but because I'm on a tablet, I don't have one that I can use with a screen. And then finally, it's from this line to round about there, we will adjust it now, like that. And where all these lines intersect, so the connections of the points are these lines, and where these lines intersect is going to be our center of transformation, okay? And we can see that this is minus one, zero, this point here, okay? So we're going to write here about the point minus one, zero. Now this part is worth two marks. You get one mark for the actual transformation, which is a rotation of 180 degrees. And you get your second mark for the point of rotation, which is minus one, zero. We're told Adam, Linda, and Ritas share an amount of money, okay? So just highlight that. Linda gets three times as much money as Ritas gets, and Linda gets half as much money as Adam gets. What fraction of the money, of the amount of money does Linda get? And this part is worth two marks, sorry, okay? So let's convert this into algebra. From here, we have that L equals 3R, and here we have that L equals half a okay so um what fraction of the amount of money does linda get 
because we're dealing with fractions, we can set one of these variables to an arbitrary value. Okay, so we can just say let r equal 1. This means that l gets 3. And because of this, this means that a is 2 times l, so a is 6. Okay, so the ratio of Adam to Linda to Ritus is 6 to 3 to 1. So the fraction for Linda, fraction for um, Linda, is going to be however much Linda has, which is 3, over the total. So 6 plus 3 plus 1, which equals 3 over 10 like that. So this part, uh, question, sorry, is worth two marks. The first mark is a process to find three amounts in correct proportion, okay? So getting up to here is your first mark. Your second mark comes with a correct final answer of three over 10. We are told pens and pencils are sold in a shop, okay? 12 pencils cost one pound 80, and the ratio of the cost of a pen to the cost of a pencil is seven to three. Work out the cost of five pens, and this uh, question is worth four marks, okay? So, we know that 12 pencils costs pound eighty. So this means one pencil is going to be pound eighty divided by 12, okay? Because we divide this side by 12, so we divide this side by 12. 180 divided by 12, we can put into a calculator, so 1.80 over 12, and we get 0 0.15. So this is 15 pence, like that. The ratio of the cost of a pen to the cost of a pencil is seven to three, okay? So let's set this up. So we say pen to pencil is going to be seven to three. We know that one pencil is going to be 15 pence. So to get this, this is going to be seven times 0 0.15 divided by three, okay? So first, we need to do three times something to get 0 0.15. And this something will equal 0 0.15 over three, which is 0 0.05. And then, because we're multiplying it by this side, we need to multiply it by this side. So this can be times 0 0.05, okay? Hence, it's 0 0.15 times seven divided by three. It's the same steps. 7 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.35, okay? So this is going to be 35 pence. Now, to work out the cost of 5 pence, okay, we can just say 5 pence equals 5 times 0 0.35. Put this into your calculator, and you get an answer of 175. And then we can just fill this up in our answer space like that. Okay, so this question is worth four marks. The first mark comes from an initial process to find the price of one pen, oh, sorry, one pencil, as we have done here. The second mark comes from a complete process to find the ratio, so one part of the pencil, so a 0 0.05 here, sorry, second mark. Third mark comes from finding the price of one pen, and fourth mark comes from getting the uh, correct final answer. We have been asked to write 84 as a product of its prime factors for two marks, okay? So, let's do that. We're going to start with 84, and we're going to do a factor tree. First, we'll take out a factor of 2. 84 divided by 2 is going to be 42. Then, we'll do the same thing. Take out a factor of 2. 42 divided by 2 is 21. And finally, we'll say 21 is going to be 3 times 7. Okay? This means that as a product of its prime factors, we're going to do 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. So this question, or this part, sorry, is worth two marks. You get one mark for a complete method to find prime factors, as we have done here, and the second mark for writing your answer in the correct format. Part B has asked us to find the LCM, lowest common multiple, of 60 and 84 for two marks, okay? So to find the lowest common multiple, we're first going to express them in terms of their uh, prime factors, okay? So we know that 84 equals two times two times three times seven from the previous part, and 60, okay, let's just do 60 on the side here, 60, two, 30, 
30 can be split into 2 and 15, and then 15 is 3 and 5. So we have 60 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay? So, now let's start grouping. These two are a group, these two are a group, these two are a group, and these two are individual. So, the LCM of 60 and 84 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times uh, 5 times 7. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 5 times 7, 12 times 5 is 60, 60 times 7, and 60 times 7 is 420. So, we can write that in our answer spot here. Like that. This part is worth two marks. The first mark comes for at least three multiples of both 60 and 84, as we have done here. And the second mark comes for uh, getting 420 as the correct final answer. Um, note, you could have written it as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. Okay, if you uh, express it like that, you do get um, one mark for it. However, you should always, because it said the lowest common multiple, you should always give the final number, okay? So you would expand it out and solve it. We are given three set of numbers, okay? The set of all numbers, 1, 2, 10. Set A is even numbers and set B is factors of 10. We have been asked to complete the Venn diagram for this information for three marks, okay? So what I'm going to do is going through the numbers one by one and i'm going to assign them okay so a is numbers so sort of this region here all the way here is just even numbers this overlap is even numbers and factors of 10 and this region b where there's no overlap is just factors of 10. any other numbers will go outside of the venn diagram inside this box okay so let's begin one well one is not even but it is a factor of 10 so one will go in here 2 is even and a factor of 10. 3 is odd and is not a factor of 10, so it will go outside. 4 is even, but it's not a factor of 10. 5 is odd, but is a factor of 10. 6 is even, but not a factor of 10. 7 is neither. 8 is even, but not a factor of 10. So 8 goes here. 9 is neither. And 10 is both even and a factor of 10. Okay? So this question is worth three marks. You get three marks um, for a fully correct Venn diagram, as we have here. I'm just going to award those three marks. You get two marks for correct numbers in at least two regions. Okay, so either this, 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 or this. So you need to pick two of those. And if those are fully correct, then you can get two marks. And if you've just got one of those regions correct, then it's just one mark. Part B has asked us, as is telling us, sorry, a number is chosen at random from the universal, universal set of all numbers, okay? Part B explicitly is asking us to find the probability that this number is in the set A and B for two marks, okay? So, we have 10 numbers all together, so it's going to be over 10. And in the set A and B, we have two numbers, okay? So it's 2 over 10. This uh, part is worth two marks. The first mark is, uh, comes from either getting two as being correct or ten as being correct. Okay, so if you've got two over some other number, you get one mark. If you've got ten over some other number, you get one mark. Okay. Your second mark comes from a fully correct answer of two over ten. Okay, so as we have done here, we get two marks like this. We are told Carlo puts tins into small boxes and into large boxes. He puts six tins into small boxes, oops, sorry, and 20 tins into large boxes. Carlo puts 300, sorry, 3,000 tins into the boxes so that the number of tins in the small box to the number of tins in the large box is 2 to 3. Carlo then says that less than 30% of the boxes filled with the tins are large boxes. Is he correct? And we must show our working. Okay, and this question is worth five marks. First, we are going to work out um, this ratio, okay, this one here. So we're going to say, oops, wrong pen, small to large, like this, okay? We know that this has to be two to three. So, we're going to say one share 
equals 3,000 tens over 2 plus 3, which is 5, so 2 plus 3. So in your calculator, do 3,000 over 5, and this is going to be 600, okay? Now, we multiply each of these numbers by 600 to get 1,200 on this side to 1,800 on that side. Okay, so what we did was we said that in the ratio 2 to 3, so there's 5 shares altogether, this 5 shares corresponds to this 300 turns, so 1 share is 3,000 over 5 to get 600. Okay, now we know how many um, tens were packaged into boxes, okay, to each box, sorry. We know 1,200 tens were packaged into small and 1,800 were packaged into large, okay. So the next step is to work out how many of each box there are, okay. So... We know that 1,200 tins um, go into small boxes, and six small there are six tins in each small box, okay? So that means the number of small boxes um, will be 1,200 over 6, which equals 200, and the number of large boxes will equal 1,800 over 20 which is 90 okay now what we need to do is we need to work out what 90 is as a proportion of the total number of boxes used okay so we will say finding 90 as a proportion actually a better way to phrase it will be finding uh, because we're dealing with uh, large boxes finding number of large boxes as a proportion of number of total boxes. And this is going to be 90, which is the number of large boxes, over 200 plus 90. And if we plug this into our calculator, so 90 over 290, we get an answer of 31%. Okay, actually, more specifically, it is 0 0.3103, etc. And this becomes 31% to two significant figures, like that. Okay, because that's all we need to make our point here. We are told Carlos says less than 30% of the box filled with tins are large boxes. Okay, but it's actually 31%. So, what we can say here is a concluding statement we can say 31% is greater than 30%. Therefore, Carlo is wrong, like this. So this um, part, sorry, this question is worth five marks. The first mark comes from finding what one share is, wrong color, sorry, finding what one share is. The second mark comes from finding how many tins go into small and large boxes. Third mark comes from finding how many of each box there are. The fourth mark comes from working out the fraction, as we have done here. And the fifth mark comes from a concluding statement, stating he is wrong. Okay? We have been asked to complete the table of values for y equals 5 minus x cubed for two marks. Okay? So this one is going to be 5 minus minus 2 all cubed. Minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 is minus 8. 5 minus minus 8 is 5 plus 8, so that's 13. Okay. This one is going to be 5 um, minus 0 cubed. So this is just going to be 5. This one is going to be 5 minus 1 cubed, which is going to be 4. And this one is going to be 5 minus 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 5 minus 8 is minus 3. So this uh, part is worth two marks, and you get two marks for a fully correct table. Otherwise, you get one mark for two or three correct values. Part B has told us on the grid below, draw the graph of y equals 5 minus x cubed for values of x from minus 2 to 2. Okay, and this is worth um, two marks. Okay, so... Uh, minus 2, our value of y was 13, okay, so minus 2, 13 is in between 12 and 14, right in the middle, so it would be there, okay, I'm going to put an x because it's cleaner than, uh, you know, making a really thick black dot, which could blur the line, then at minus 1, um, at x equals minus 1, sorry, we had that y 
equals six. Okay, so minus one, six here. Um, at x equals zero, y equals five. So we can pop that there. At x equals one, y equals four. So we can pop that there. And finally, at x equals two, y equals minus three. And minus three would be in between minus two and minus four, so that. Now all we need to do is we need to join this up, okay, with a nice smooth curve. So something, oops, I missed that one, that, that point there. Something like that, okay? So this part is worth two marks, okay? The first mark comes from plotting at least four of the points from the table correctly, and uh, you get both marks for a fully correct curve drawn, okay? So we get two marks because we have done this uh, correctly. We have been asked to work out the value of x, and we need to give our answer correct to one decimal place for two marks, okay? So we will need to use trigonometry here. Now let's label our sides. This is the hypotenuse, and this is our opposite because it's opposite to our angle, okay? From our rules of so ka toa, okay, the one which has o and h is so, so this is the rule we will use, okay? And this rule says sine of our angle theta is our opposite over our hypotenuse. And because we're trying to find our opposite here, we will rearrange this and we say that our opposite is our hypotenuse times the sine of our angle. So, this means our hypotenuse is 178 millimeters times sine of 34 degrees. Okay, putting this into your calculator, 178 times the sine of 34 will get you an answer of 99.5. Um, three, six, etc. Okay, millimeters. Now we have been asked to give it to one decimal place, so we need to round this. Okay, and it rounds down to 99.5 five millimeters like that so this part is worth two marks the first mark comes from knowing you need to use the sine rule okay as we have done here second mark comes from getting a correct final answer we have been asked to find 2a minus 3b as a column vector for two marks okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute our column vectors in okay so we're going to say this is 2 3 4 minus 3 5 minus 2 now remember with column vectors okay if we have a b sorry wrong color if we have a b plus c d like this this says a plus c b plus d okay so we add the rows okay to each other so a and c b and d okay and if we have a scale as we have here so if we have k times x y this is k x K, Y. Okay, these are the two rules we'll need to do this. So, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, like this, minus, okay, 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, like that, okay? 6 minus 15 is minus 9, 8 minus minus 6 is 8 plus 6, which is 14, like that. So we can fill it in here, minus 9 and 14, there we go. So this um, question is worth two marks. The first mark comes from um, doing the correct steps and getting minus nine and something else or something else in 14. Okay, so if you've got one of the numbers correct, you get one mark and you get both uh, marks if you got both of the answers correct, like I have here. We are told the diagram shows a right angle triangle and a quarter circle. The right angle triangle ABC has angle ABC, which equals 90 degrees, okay, obviously, and the quarter circle has center C with radius CB. Work out the area of the quarter circle, and we need to give our answer correct with three significant figures showing all of our working, okay? And this um, question is worth four marks. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find length CB. So, we're going to say CB equals the square root of... 9 squared minus 6 squared. And this comes from the Pythagoras theorem, okay? So if we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse, 
okay? And we want to find, say, b squared. This will be b squared equals c squared minus a squared. And so b equals the square root of c squared minus a squared, like that, which is what we've done here. So this will equal the square root of 9 squared, which is 81, minus 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. This equals the square root of 45, and this in third form simplifies to 3 root 5. Okay? So this here is 3 root 5. Now, the area of our circle, okay, so area of circle is going to be pi r squared. So that means the area of a quarter of a circle is going to be, so I'm just going to write that here, we'll say quarter of circle will equal 1 over 4 times pi times r squared. So let's uh, do this. We're going to say this is 1 over 4 times pi times our radius, which is cb here, times 3 root 5 squared. Now you can plug all of this into your calculator. So 1 over 4 times pi times 3 root 5 squared, okay, gets you 35.3429, etc. So 35.342 and so on, like that. Right then, okay. And the thing is, we were asked for three significant figures. So we need to round this to three significant figures, which is 35.3, like this. And we can write this in our answer space, which is all the way down here, as being 35.3 meters squared. Okay? Shows how little space it took to, to do such a complicated looking question. Okay? So this question is worth four marks, okay? The first mark comes from um, using your Pythagoras theorem, okay? So we can state it here. Second mark comes from getting our radius, okay? So three root five, okay? Bear in mind, CB is our radius. So if you have found CB, uh, whether you've stated explicitly it's a radius or not, it doesn't really matter, okay? Third mark comes from stating that you're going to be using this formula here, which is a quarter times the area of a circle and the fourth and final mark is for a correct answer in the range of 35.2 to 35.4 okay we've got 35.3 which is right in the middle so that's oh sorry this is third and this is our fourth mark here okay we are told each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 15 degrees work out the number of sides of the polygon for two marks so the rule we need to use here is that 360 degrees divided by the number of sides n equals the um, size of exterior angle, okay? I'm just going to call this theta, okay? So simply put, we're saying 360 degrees over n equals theta degrees. What we need to do is we need to rearrange this for n. So we're going to say that 360 degrees equals n times theta degrees and that n equals 360 degrees over theta degrees. Sorry, if you like that. And what we've done from here to here, sorry, first is this step, is we have multiplied both sides by n. And what we have done from here to here is we have divided both sides by theta degrees, okay? All we need to do now is plug in our values, okay? So we will say that n equals 360 degrees over 15 degrees. If you put that into your calculator, you get an answer of 24, which means it is 24 sides. This part is, sorry, this question is worth two marks. The first mark comes from a complete method, okay? So starting off here, your second mark comes from getting 24 as the correct final answer. We have been asked to write the gradient of the line with equation y equals 2x plus 3 for one mark. Okay, This is simple because this is of the form y equals mx plus c, where m is a gradient. Okay, So m is 2, and that means the gradient is just 2. This part is worth one mark, and you get one mark for a correct final answer.